easy uh, to talk about uh, fat versus hyaluronic acid uh, for uh, battery shapement and enhancement. And we're talking about it because now it's more and more trendy, it started like a dozen of years uh, ago, and even social media set the tone. Uh, now we have belfies, and it's like selfies, but people take uh, photos of their butt and post this uh, on Instagram, and it's become very trendy. And <clears throat> I think that uh, the this hypersexualization started with uh, the Sarah Bartman, uh, probably the earliest example of hypersexualization of the black female body. Uh, she was taken from her homeland to England to be put on display for her large hips and buttocks. And at that time, it was like uh, so exotic and so different uh, from uh, from the people in England. And uh, yes, we are different, but also we follow trends. And uh, if you see the last century, we started with big and round uh, but in the early 90s and step by step it turned flat, curvy, very curvy and then super fit and we came to the supermodels but in the 90s and I think that all of you, you remember this famous photo of Kardashian with this champagne glass on her butt and uh, it was like a booming uh, also of uh, BBLs uh, and now it's coming back a little bit to more natural and normal shapes. But for years, we get this hourglass uh, demand in our consultations. And like Coco Chanel was saying, la mode se démode, le style jamais. This is what I'm always telling to my patients. Don't follow trends, try to stay natural, try to stay uh, uh, to, to just follow beauty and not only trends. And uh, before injection, uh, it's very important to, to do a good assessment. I think that the assessment is the key. Of course, the right indication which patient you will uh, choose for fat grafting or for hyaluronic acid. If you go for the hyaluronic acid, which product you will choose, especially in bioscience, we have several products that we can use uh, for this uh, purpose. What is the technique? We have different techniques and uh, a lot of people use different uh, techniques, whether the balls or the retroperate final technique and how to do the right follow-up. And this will require some expertise and some experience. We are different and people are different and the good assessment is the key. So we all know these different shapes from A to B and I think that Dr. Craig can talk about it. So I'm not going to talk about it a lot, but it's very important to, to, to check the anatomy of the bones. We are different. Some are tall, some are short. And also to check the, the tonicity of the muscles. Some do a lot of workouts, some not. And the most important thing is the fat deposition. So the fat deposition is the key because at the end, we're going to reshape the butt using the external uh, tissues more than the internal tissues. So it's very important to check the fat deposition. Hip dips are normal. Now, we have a lot of patients asking for this hourglass, even if when they move the, and when they walk, they want to stay like that. But I'm always saying to them, like the hip dips are normal, but we can also uh, fill these hip dips with rather fat or with hyaluronic acid. Yes, now I'm gonna give you uh, an, uh, an example about how important the analysis of the fat deposition. So let's see this first patient with the love handles. You see that here we have these two amount of fat. Uh, love handles in the right position, not that much. And also we have this uh, out, uh, uh, the, 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 this uh, outer thighs uh, fat deposition. And if I will have to draw a line between these two amounts of fat, and then I will need a lot of volume. And I think that the fat option was for me a better option because otherwise I've got to use a lot of uh, injectables. While if I will see this patient and analyze her fat, the fat handles are coming down even to the third segment of the upper butt. And uh, the outer thighs are really important. And if I'll, if I'll draw the line between these two lines, and then I will not have a lot of products to use. And I think that with just some hyaluronic acid, 
we can fulfill her dream and that this is a good option here for hyaluronic acid sculpture. Now, working in Dubai since now almost like a year and a half uh, uh, made me realize more that there is a lot of nuances between lot different type of people. Because in the same day, we see we are seeing an Australian lady and then Swedish or Russian and Emirati and Nigerian. And the anatomy is the same, but the phenotype is different. And as plastic surgeons, we have to understand these small differences in different anatomic parts and adapt to our approach. Of course, if we will try to generalize, we will have a lot of cliches. And because when we say Asians, of course, there is Indians and there is Chinese and there is uh, uh, Thai and all of them are different, but the majority of the Asians that I see at least, they have like A shape and almost no V shaped buttocks and they have short bones with poor guttural projection. And even if you go uh, on Google or on our Twitter, you'll find a lot of uh, uh, sarcasm uh, uh, from Asians themselves about their butt, talking about Asian booty disease or even ABS, Asian butt syndrome because they are doing belt phases and saying, look, I have an ABS and I need some bad enhancement. They are very good candidate for hyaluronic acid if you, they don't have fat. Now, Arabs also are different. We cannot generalize, but the majority of them, they come for this heart shape. So whatever the shape of the beginning, they all want this hourglass shape and mostly they have important fat of percentage and they with with low gluteal projection and according to each region some will will have uh, inquiry about more hips and some about more gluteal uh, projection area and some will ask for both they are really good candidates for fat and also for hyaluronic acid because nowadays we are seeing a lot of them that they don't want to go under the knife and they will tell you doctor if i will have this solution without downtime and uh, if the solution only will stay one year or two years, I'm going to take it, no, no problem. Africans and Black are really gifted by God. So we have here the best scenario with the very good projection, the very nice slope from the back to the, to the buttocks with the very good skin quality at the majority of the times. They are really asking more about hip dips than the projection because they already have a good projection. And they are both candidates for fat or hyaluronic acid, while Americans, Caucasians, and some Australians, they are taller than Asians. They have long bones, and they have all the shapes that may see on anatomy. And they have different skin quality also, and they ask for projection and hips enhancement, but they are not asking for big volumes like we may see here in GCC countries. And they are good candidate for both fat and hyaluronic acid as well. Now, of course, no matter the origin, the phenotype or the genotype, the anatomy is the same. So the battery reaction is the same. The fat survival is the same. The inflammation probably, or the complication may be the same. So the bone out there, the muscles are there, the fat is there and the skin is there. But we have just to distinguish a little bit by a good assessment and not go to the generalities. Of course, all the time, every case is different. But there is some common rules to observe and some methods of enhancement. So what are they? If we go, I mean, we eliminate the, the, the post bariatric and the, the bottle lifts, we will have what? We have implants, we will have fat or combo, and we will have hyaluronic acid uh, fillers. We're only talking about hyaluronic acid fillers. Uh, uh, we will never use any other product, of course, like the safety guidelines describe it. So what are the solutions? Acceptance and self-esteem are important. Yes, but I also need the more defined buttocks. While training in squats can help, it's important to remember that well-shaped buttocks is not only about muscles. So surgery, as we are surgeons, that is our golden tool. But you need enough and you need good fat and also very good plastic surgeon because it's blind surgery. And we're going to see also that they have a very high rate of complications. Implants or combo, yes, it's a good option. We don't have fat and also we don't have projection. But sooner or later, will finish with a complication or at least the displacement or you have to go back to the OT to change these implants. 
So we will still have the hyaluronic acid, which is a very good option, especially for skinny. When I'm putting skinny like this, because uh, we'll see later that really skinny people are not the best candidate. It's safe if it's done properly. I really want to highlight this, if it's done properly. It's quick to achieve and doesn't require surgical skills. It's a promo. I mean, if you don't like it, it's gonna go. Or also we can uh, uh, solve it. Now let's start with fat. Let's start with fat and I love to use fat. I, I, I use fat everywhere. I use fat in my facelifts, I use fat in my blepharoplasties, I use fat in, uh, in my breast segmentation, I use fat in body contouring and body sculpture because I love, I love fat, it's a fabulous tool that may help me to, to, to correct very difficult liposculpture. And of course, while doing mommy makeover, you know how you may change the whole body while with doing abdominoplasty and, 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 and breast and using fat in right proportions to change these curves. So fat for me is fabulous. And I, I really use fat everywhere because of, it will give me the projection that will last forever. It will also correct the, the, the hip dips. So fat is fabulous, but there is complications and we know all how many deaths happened due to this uh, procedure. Thanks God, nowadays we have less and less due to uh, the huge work of the four societies, I think four societies, uh, or, or, or more, let's say ICEPs and the American societies about uh, the safety guidelines uh, uh, and how to inject the fat. But still, this procedure has important mortality with fat embolism, but not also. There is thromboembolism accident, hypotonia that may happen, uncontrolled blood loss, and fat necrosis, septicemia, and a lot of other complications that you know them. And this is a blind surgery that sometimes require some more experience than uh, hyaluronic acid in, in, in injection. <clears throat> so what do we have here with bioscience? <clears throat> Sorry. We have these products. I think that the majority of you already tried or may try, uh, whether higher Corp or, or Genifel, we have two uh, Genifel Contour and Contour Plus and two higher Corp MLF1 and 2. They are used in different areas, especially for buttocks and calves. And uh, we'll see later with the injection technique uh, where and when we use them. And the hyaluronic acid is fabulous because you can also achieve the same thing. I mean, you can achieve the, the, the projection, you can achieve also the pain correct, the hip dips in, in one session. And uh, of course, there is a lot of advantages. It's a quick procedure. It's like a 20 minutes procedure. It can be performed with local anesthesia and uh, like 80% without even anesthesia. It's very rewarding for both the patient and the physician. We have to admit also as physicians, this is like, uh, I mean, quick money that you may earn uh, because you will require an important number of syringes. Uh, so it's very rewarding for the patient because also she's really happy to go directly uh, to her lunch break after and to sell a Look, I just did it and I, I'm taking my lunch with you. So it's uh, there is a strong positive psychological impact. This is what I saw uh, with my patients. The, the psychological impact is there. I mean, they see the difference when they put their gene. There is no downtime required and there is no immediate dangerous complications like the embolism we may see uh, with fat grafting. Uh, it's effective, it's immediate, it's there. It's Even if you don't like it, it's, it's not for life. And also there is a possibility to redo the procedure after a few weeks if needed. So it's not for life can be an advantage, but, but also can, can be a disadvantage because sometimes people will tell you, look, I cannot afford to have like these injections several times because it's, we're not talking about tissue that can be revascularized and like, uh, and that will stay forever with you. It may be costly if you want to do Good results. I put this kind of result here. It's uh, it's not a good result because this is what we can do with the budget we have. So uh, it's really nested also with the budget, and it's very important to, in your patient's selection to discuss about that. There is a possibility of displacement, of course, as I told you, it's uh, there is not revascularization, and we're sitting on the bat, we're moving with it, we're walking with it. 
So there is this possibility. We would let you know after uh, when we talk about the technique, how to reduce the rate of displacement. Of course, we know all these complications about inflammation, infection, nodules, hyperpigmentation, uh, system migration uh, that we saw on news even. Uh, these, I think that these complications are really nested with the indication, the technique, and the volume more than the product itself. And that's why that's why here I'm I, I'm here to speak also about bioscience because now after a couple of years I'm uh, I trust the product. Now, no matter the origin, the phenotype, or the genotype, I think that in my experience, uh, the best shape will be the a the heart shape. And the worst scenario will be this V and square shape because they are really difficult to fix only with hyaluronic acid. They are even difficult to, to fix with, with fat, you know that. Uh, also, uh, the, the best uh, volume will be mild volume. Uh, of course, big volumes that they want bigger, it's not good. And also, the very skinny patient, they are really not a good candidate because you will have you will see your product uh, quickly and you will have more displacement. And also you may have more inflammation because you are very close to the skin. And uh, skin laxity is one of the most important thing here to consider. Uh, good skin laxity is, is really important. When you have someone after massive weight loss, it's not really a good candidate. And uh, uh, you may uh, change the indication to a body lift or to a combo. Now, the good and bad indications, talk about the patients, now the indications. As I said, the, the bad indications after massive weight loss, I did some cases uh, uh, that uh, really wanted some areas. But it's really complicated to, to achieve that how many and nice slope and nice curve. And you're gonna quickly go in very big number of syringes and then to danger zones. So I would not advise to go uh, with massive weight loss uh, patients uh, with hyaluronic acid. Uh, significant skin looseness, of course, uh, or sub, uh, potential fat overload also, these are not good candidate if they want to just correct so cellulitis these are not very a good candidate the athletic or skinny we spoke about it and the pronos it, it poses of the buttocks this is not lifting uh lifting product it's it may give you a lifting effect it's like for the face the people say that this uh, uh hyaluronic acid will lift you the mid face hyaluronic acid is not it cannot lift but it will give you a lifting effect but the push-up effect of the tissues but sooner or later we live on earth and there is gravity and things will go down. So the high expectations paired with a limited budget. Also when the patient will come with the V shape and there is no projection at all and very important uh, fibrosis tissue, especially after surgery and they will tell you, look, and they will show you a photo. I wanted the same and I have the money for it. It's not about money. It's, it's about uh, what we can do and what we cannot do. And also the people that uh, the same night will go to party, we have a lot of them in Dubai, they go directly and they even take a photo and send it from the beach. They are turning directly after. So now you will see that I'm putting, uh, I'm putting now uh, some uh, dressing just to remind the patient that, uh, that we did something also. The good candidate are uh, the moderate BMI with limited fat available for surgical consideration. These are really good candidates. They know exactly what they want and they they they, they are really uh, I mean they know all the complications they know that they they don't want to go to the surgery and uh, maybe one day so these are really good candidates uh, the good candidates for fat grafting but also not really for the surgery they, they they may tell you look I just want to have this let's start for example with the hip dips and uh, if it's working believe me they will come back for the projection also and these are really also good candidates. And the ones that uh, doing uh, some workout and they want to enhance like just the top uh, of the buttocks or the the, the 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 slope between the back, the lower back and, and the upper part of the buttocks, uh, these are also good, uh, good candidates. The moderate enhancement aimed at improving curves. This is, I mean, when you have a, a, a patient that knows exactly what uh, hyaluronic acid uh, injection mean, uh, the quantity 
that we are using and how to do a follow-up and probably she will come back for a revision. These are also our very good candidates. <laughs> so can we talk about fight between hyaluronic acid and fat? As a surgeon, I'm, I'm gonna tell you that like for the face, body fillers can never replace surgery. When there is an indication for facelift, you cannot overfill the patient and have this botched uh, effect with overfill the patient. This is the same. When you have an indication for a butt lift after losing a lot of weight, it's the indication for surgery. You, have, you only want a big amount of fat. Of course, you cannot play with the C-ridges and put like hundreds and hundreds. No, of course. And for like the face, there is good and bad indications for the fillers. Exactly. And they should never fight. They even may cooperate after sometimes your rhinoplasty, you still have like a little bit of irregularities on your dose and the patient is not really, I mean, uh, ready to go again for revision. You are not really ready for the go again for revision. And with a small drop of hyaluronic acid, it's done. It's done for one year and she will come back after one year and you do like small drops after a couple of years, you'll do nothing because the fibrosis is there. It's exactly the same. Sometimes I use it even after my BBL and sometimes I have like a small uh, uh, problem in the hip dip because now they really want this half to have this curve, even when they walk and they take uh, different photos. And uh, when you, they are ready to, to, to have this perfect photo. So of course, uh, we can discuss, and if it's a, a good indication, why not? We can put hyaluronic acid after the, the surgery. So they should never fight. There is an indication in the population for both, and sometimes the population can consume that, it can consume hyaluronic acid. If I personally prefer putting hyaluronic acid for lips enhancement in an adequate way and a reasonable quantity rather than fat, I don't put a lot of fat in my lips during uh, and the lips, I, I not mine. <laughs> the lips, I'm I'm operating. I prefer doing hyaluronic acid. Uh, so I also prefer to put hyaluronic acid in light way, a reasonable quantity to treat a small head dip or to add a little pro projection. Sorry. Uh, <clears throat> and of course, we're gonna talk later about the complication. And similar to facial fillers, body fillers can also lead to complications. For the face, these include necrosis, amputation, blindness, overfilling and heaviness, tendon effect and distortion, and you know all the complications about the face. So the only reason for continuing facial injection is our extensive knowledge <clears throat> about the dangerous zones and the technique and the indication based on viscosity and reality. And I believe that, of course, we don't sleep uh, uh, on our faces and we don't walk with our faces, but this underscores the need to invest more on science uh, to an education rather than to reject completely uh, body fillers. <clears throat>